All right, so just to let you guys know in the link below, I started a new channel called The Corporate Hustler. And this channel is going to be about starting businesses on the internet, how to start businesses. There's going to be a new training. It's a whole bunch of new stuff that's coming in November. So if you want to be part of the corporate hustler, go below, hit the link, and there's going to be a lot of different stuff that's going to be coming on that channel. So if you want to be part of it, go below, hit the link, subscribe, hit the bell notification thing, and we will see what happens in the future. So let's get into this video. Six trillion dollars was placed into the economy in 2020. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about how the CARES Act of 2020 and all of the things that happened to combat the pandemic led us to where we are today and why we're going to have an incredibly deep, stout, and a very huge barrier to overcome, trying to overcome this $6 trillion infusion into the American economy. When the pandemic went off, I, I was putting up a lot of videos talking about how people should take this time to actually upgrade their skills, do things, go to school, just don't sit at home, smoke weed, play video games, have sex. And I, I made that point, but a lot of people, some people listen, some people who are watching this channel listen, but there was a lot of people who did not listen. There was a lot of people who were completely unaware of the things that were happening. They were completely oblivious. And when we got the six trillion, let me go ahead and break it down. Six trillion. First of all, there was the EDIL loan, the PPP loan, the enhanced payroll, direct stimulus payments, and there was something else. There was other programs. First of all, I don't mean to be mean. I don't mean to be um, a little crazy, but one of the things that I felt actually harmed the economy, and we're, we're gonna talk about the real economy and the propped up economy. The 2020 CARES Act created what I consider the propped up economy. The propped up economy was, it created an illusion that there was more natural money in the economy than there really was. And you saw it everywhere. Uh, people who were doing DoorDash were making two and two, like $2,000 a week. People, restaurants were opening up. Uh, there was a lot of people and people, people, people were buying cars. And on my last video talking about people buying cars and the, this whole new thing with the CARES Act, I want to keep it to the CARES Act, but there's other things I have to talk about. With cars, we had severe inventory crisis. We had severe reductions in inventory. So they were making cars that didn't have all the parts. So this created an environment where car sellers were selling cars at an extremely high rate. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50,000. And we'll, we'll talk about how that affects us today. And there was so much money and banks were lending money and then there was no foreclosures, there was no evictions. So we essentially took the real economy out of the hands of the people and created this propped up economy. Now, this is a huge, huge problem. And I, I mentioned this, you know, someone's like, well, the dealers, like I'm in the state where, where I'm at, they, they, put dealer, they put new car tags on, on, on new cars. There's no, where the dealers can create your, your tags. Um, I'm out and I just don't see as many new car tags as I used to. 
And one of the reasons is, and this is something that came from the pandemic relief, is people are buried in these cars because they took out these loans. And even though the cars may be a year or two old, they owe way more than what the car is worth. So it makes it very hard to trade this car. And a lot of these people are buried in these cars and they just got to keep them and pay them off and drive them and hopefully the cars serve them well. Another thing that happened was the evictions. Right now, evictions are dramatically spiking, dramatically spiking at the point where the eviction procedures, the, the people who do the evictions are way, way behind. They're way behind. And there are more and more evictions coming because as we move into the real economy, the real economy doesn't care. The real economy is relentless. The real economy is vicious. The real economy will let people cry, let people be homeless. The real economy is not playing with people. And this is where we are. We, we move from the 20 cares pandemic economy. Now we're moving to the real economy and a lot of nasty things are happening. And I actually said this, um, we should have just let the things that were going to happen during the pandemic economy happen because at this point, we would not be in the situation because right now the pandemic economy created the current housing market. Right now you have a bunch of people who have good interest rates, two, 3% interest rates. They have no reason to move and they're, they're just not putting their houses on the market because they would move from that two to 3% interest rate to seven to 8% and God forbid if they have damaged credit, if they have damaged credit, these people are at eight, nine, 10% interest rates for their house. And then also another thing that's happening because the forced depreciation of the houses was so crazy, real estate property taxes are spiking. So even if you were someone with one of those two and 3% interest rates, but your property taxes went up, guess what? Your, your mortgage payment also went up. So we, we have a lot of stuff. So we, we have the economy that's literally flooded with money. And this is one of the reasons that we had dramatic inflation, inflation, the inflation that so many people are talking about. And once again, the money that was put into the economy has created such a pernicious situation for people to actually do the things that they need to do to be successful, healthy, happy, and wise. So one of the things that I feel, and I really, really feel, because also, it's kind of hard to uh, backtrack because we don't know what would have happened if they had left the economy open. We have no clue. And at the time I was in the state of Georgia, which the economy, it really never closed in Georgia. You know, you, you had a lot of people who went from going to work to working from home, but the economy never really, really shut down in Georgia. It never happened. And I say that to say, that if they had left the economy open, once again, there's no telling how many people would have gotten sick and how many people would have died. I have no clue. I cannot make those guess because, but using Georgia as a template, Georgia did not shut down. Georgia was pretty much open. Um, it's not like they had police running folks off the highway. Um, one of the things is businesses were open and Honestly, if we hadn't had that $6 trillion injection, we would be not facing the issues and stuff that we're facing today in terms of the economy doing things a little differently. The, the economy is actually 
I believe we're, if we're not in a recession now, we're going to be in a recession in 2024. And all the things that would have happened if we had let them happen during the pandemic are going to happen after the pandemic. We're going to see, once again, evictions are crazy. What's coming after the evictions? Foreclosures. Foreclosures are starting to spike up. Now, I don't think that we're going to have, like in 2008, we had like 10, 10, almost 12 million foreclosures. I don't think we're going to have that number of foreclosures, but if we were to have 4 million, 5 million foreclosures, plus with the evictions, plus with the downturn in Airbnb, real estate's going to take a hit. Real estate's going to take a hit. Now, when I say real estate's going to take a hit, I'm talking about certain people are going to be hurt by real estate, but the overall real estate thing, I don't think it's going to ha it's going to come to what had happened in, um, 2008, 9, 10, 11. I don't think we're going to have that type of real estate based crisis. We're not going to have that. But real estate is going to be very, very tricky for a lot of people. A lot of people are going to actually run into a lot of problems with real estate because with real estate prices being pushed up and, you know, I was looking today just to see, and I saw one property and I actually went in to look at the data. This house sold in, 2010 for 500,000, right? And now someone was trying to sell it for 1.2. They bought the house for, like I said, 500,000. And they were trying to sell, they were trying to get like a $750,000 premium over the price that they paid for the house. And it, it just didn't happen. It just didn't happen. And this is one of the things you're going to see. And also I, I looked at the number of rentals that are coming on the market, tons and tons and tons of rentals. So all of the things you're seeing with people being buried in their cars, uh, real estate issues, employment, and the next thing is employment issues. The number of layoffs that are coming is going to be staggering. Now, we could have dealt with this in 2020, 2021, but we didn't. So what is going to happen is we're going to have to deal with this in 2024, 2025 and 2026. And one of the things that I'm seeing is that so many people are ill prepared for the new economy. The new economy is just not playing with folks. And one of the signs, and if you don't believe me, just go ahead and put DoorDash, Instacart, Spark, all of these gig apps in the YouTube search bar and look at who's doing this gig work. The number of very attractive women who are doing gig work is a sign. Number one, the men don't have the money to go ahead and secure these women and wife them up. That's huge. So the men are suffering and the women are suffering and everyone is suffering. And this is going to continue to get really, really rough. It's going to continue to actually, you know, 2024 is going to be a killer year in my mind in terms of, uh, we're going to see what's going to happen with Christmas. We're going to see what's going to happen. You know, you know, Halloween is, a few days away and then we're going to have Thanksgiving and then we're going to have Christmas and we're going to really see. And this is something else too. I was in Costco and I saw Christmas trees on sale already. It, it's not even Halloween. It's not even Halloween. I saw Christmas trees on sale already. Christmas trees on sale. And with these Christmas trees being on sale, it, it just made me funny because I was like, you got a Christmas tree next to Frankenstein. It's kind of crazy. So we're going to see what this holiday season looks like. We're going to see. But 
my opinion, and this is just my opinion, I'm just one guy on the internet. My opinion is if we hadn't had that $6 trillion infusion into the economy, we would not be where we are today. Just simply would not be there. Just wouldn't be there.